Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We hope you had a fantastic weekend, and thank you for joining us once again for our daily English news edition. As usual, I'm Daniel Cook, your host, presenting a translated version Monday through Saturday at 6 p.m. Around 83,000 small businesses that have annual gross income of 50 million old lek or less will be excluded from all taxes, paying only social and health insurance. This is the decision of the Albanian government and will enter into force on January 1, 2016, along with the new fiscal package. The news was announced today by Prime Minister Edi Rama during a meeting with small business representatives. He also declared that businesses with an annual gross income of between 50 and 80 million lek will pay lower taxes. The income tax rate for this bracket will be reduced from 7.5 to 5 percent. Rama promised that there will be no, uh, no more fines for undeclared family on for undeclared family employees. Announcing that there is a new electronic system in the tax directory, Rama declared that this will bring fewer tax audits in the field. According to the new plan for next year, small businesses will have to declare their revenues only once per year. After the widespread rejection of business owners, opposition reps, and even majority members, the government has decided to soften the penalties included in the new criminal code. Failure to issue uh, sales receipts will now be punished with either a fine or prison time of up to one year. In the initial version, the penalties included either a fine or up to three years in prison. This is the second time the government has made changes to the original. Two weeks ago, they made the change that prison time will only be a punishment for repeat offenses. Despite the easing of the policy by the government, the opposition continues to reject the amendments to the criminal code, saying that informality cannot be fought with repressive measures against businesses. The majority has also withdrawn from some amendments to the labor code, but not the article that gives the right of return to unfairly dismissed employees. The Institute for Democracy and Mediation, with the support of the German foundation Friedrich Ebert, presented an analysis today called Strengthening the Integrity of the Public Administration in Albania. Present at the activity, the German Ambassador Hoffman encouraged the politicians to avoid making appointments to the public administration based upon political preference. He pointed out that continuous appointments and dismissals tend to create a stalemate in the administration. People should be kept in their positions for long-term periods, he said. There should not be dismissals and appointments based upon political preferences in order to ensure continuity. This is of great importance. My presence here shows my support for this issue, said Mr. Hoffman. Speaking during the presentation, the German diplomat said that the reform in the public administration carries special importance right after the justice reform. He went on, the stability of public services and the competence and integrity of those who work in civil service are of extraordinary importance. Practically, the officials should know what happened two years ago. If they are not aware of the master plan behind the things that occurred two or three or four years ago, this is serious and very harmful, said the German ambassador. One of the authors of the analysis said that corruption remains at high levels in Albania and that ethical practices in institutions are at a minimum level. Homage was paid at the French embassy today in honor of the victims of the Paris attack. Dignitaries of various fields conveyed their heartfelt condolences. The president of the Albanian Football Federation, Armando Duca, the captain of the national team, Dorik Sana, and the vice chairwoman of the assembly, Valentina Leskai, were among those who paid tribute to the victims today. Meanwhile, the Catholic Church in Shkodra held a special mass in the honor of the victims and called the Muslim community to discourage and punish terrorism. Citizens of Fier and Lushnia also paid tribute today with lit candles and a moment of silence. To honor the victims of the Paris attacks, the Albanian government declared a day of mourning in Albania. A moment of silence was observed in all state institutions at 12 o'clock, and flags were lowered to half mast. The third meeting of the National Council of European Integration was held today, and the progress, for, uh, progress report for Albania was presented. The director for EU enlargement, Christian Danielson, stated that the report clearly shows that there has been steady progress in Albania. He highlighted the need for justice reform and the fight against corruption. 
The meeting was dominated by the harsh language of the opposition representatives who asked the EC director whether he is aware of the concerns and cases the opposition has denounced in relation to corruption and the criminal connections of the ministers of the government. The following question was posed to Danielson by the Democratic MP Flamur Noka. Are you aware that the interior minister is involved in drug trafficking and that his vehicle was used to traffic drugs internationally? Are you aware that the criminology laboratory was burned down? What should happen if there is a minister involved in these scandals? The director of the EU enlargement responded, We are not investigators, Mr. Noka. The report is clear. More is needed in the fight against trafficking, corruption, and organized crime. These are important issues for which continual support is requested. The fulfillment and implementation of the criteria and priorities are very important, said Danielson. The chairwoman of the council, Mylinda Bregu, requested a date for the opening of negotiations for the membership in the EU. And the Minister of Justice, Uli Magnani, declared that decriminalization is vital to the realization of the justice reform. In continuation of his tour called the time for the citizens to speak, the Democratic chairman, Luzin Basha, met with the farmers of Selenitsa today. He was familiarized with their situation and their complaints that they have not received any compensation for the damage they suffered in the floods. The farmers also complained that they cannot afford the cost of living, which has significantly increased. Basha presented the Democratic Party program for agriculture, which provides a budget of $100 million, the largest ever, according to Basha. He said, our program includes the biggest budget this country has ever set aside for agriculture. Currently, it is, if it is at $5 million, but we will raise it to $100 million, out of which $40 million will be used to pay the taxes for the villages. This means that you will buy your products without paying tax, uh, taxes. We will strengthen the checks and pardon the energy arrears. All farmers will be able to sell their products throughout the country, said Mr. Basha to the farmers of Selenitsa. Another parking option has been added to the capital city as Tirana's mayor, Arion Valiai, inaugurated a new parking lot near the stadium, Salman Stermas. After establishing toll parking at the Italia Square, the municipality has remo uh, removed the illegal subjects that occupied the area near the stadium to put in new parking with an electronic payment system. Mayor Valiai made the following speech. Today we are returning a square that was occupied in an illegal way. We transformed the area into public parking within a month. This is an investment made for your children. By only paying 100 lek, citizens can invest practically in a better city. With this money, we will plant more trees. We will create more bicycle lanes. This is the city we want, the city we voted for. This is the promise that we are keeping, said Mayor Valiai. That's the end of our edition for today. Thanks again for joining us. We'll be back again tomorrow at the same time with more Albanian updates in English. Have a good evening.